Hello? Hello? Yeah, they can hear us on the stream now. Oh, great. <laughs> ASMR. I have no review of the monitor yet, by the way. I haven't hooked it okay, up yet. Okay, that's fine. It showed up right before I had to leave yesterday. Welcome okay. to the Midwest Gun Nerds <laughs> ASMR podcast. How turned on are you right now? <laughs> so turned on. <laughs> so turned on. <clears throat> <clears throat> <laughs> All right, anyways, welcome to the Midwest Game Nerds Podcast. I'm your host, John, and here with me today are Brian hey. and Alex. Hello. Today we've got some game news before we dive into Tom Clancy's The Division 2 and some early impressions on Sekiro, Shadows Die Twice. But before we get to all of that, if you want to follow us on social media or see other places you can listen to or watch a show, check out MidwestGameNerds.com slash links. The Midwest Podcast Network now has a Patreon. The Patreon is meant to benefit all the shows on the network. You can subscribe for as little as $1 a month and help keep our shows alive and well. Check it out at mpn.bz slash Patreon. As always, we do appreciate your feedback, which you can send to MidwestGameNerds at gmail.com. And don't forget to follow us on Twitch as well as rate and review us on your favorite podcatcher. Alex, update for the network. Go. This week, the Horror Movie Yearbook guys took a field trip to Cincinnati to go to the Horror Hound Cincinnati convention. And, uh, horror Hound? Horror Hound. Oh, okay. Horror Hound. Not Horror Hound. Horror Hound. Jorge? Jorge Hound. Uh, but yeah, they got to meet some people and get pictures and they bought some stuff and they talk about it all on this week's episode. Go listen to it. It's quite good. Very cool. Uh, that's about it. Uh, there's good. probably no Westworld this year. I think there's probably no alienist this year. The whole set for Westworld burned down in the fires. Well, yeah, that's true, too. Um, But uh, is that what? Yeah. In the California fires, they lost that giant ranch that they've been filming, like everything on Westworld on, like the whole desert city. Whoa. Like, yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah. Uh, Thanks, Obama. But uh, (laughs) there will be some gone to Texas at some point, probably in like October or August ish. So uh, look forward to that. And and between now and then, I don't know. We should probably do something else too, but we'll see. Always got tons of ideas, just not enough time to do them. That's, yeah, that's true. So that's it. Cool. Uh, Yeah. What, have we been playing anything other than what we've been playing? I have. <clears throat> what you got? I played precisely one match of Mortal Kombat 11. Just one match. Yes. I got into the, the online stress test they ran last weekend. Mm. Yeah. Because this weekend, I think there's a beta test for those who pre-ordered. Okay. Uh, or something like that soon. Um, so all they had open was the online mode, which is not what I go to Mortal Kombat for. And I, I played around and got my ass handed to me and I put it down and said, that's a pretty Mortal Kombat game. <laughs> uh, the cool thing is... The way that they have it set up, and maybe this has happened in other fighting games since, I'm not actually sure, but the two people who get match made in the casual like playlist or whatever have to agree to face each other, and not only does it show you your record and their record, so I was like 0-0 for this match, and I got like five to seven people to just flat out say no because I hadn't played yet, which was cool. But Wow. Uh, <laughs> They also show how you're connected, so you can refuse to play people who are on Wi-Fi if you don't want to play anybody oh, on Wi-Fi, or you can only you can you can refuse to play people who are uh, hardwired if you wanted to. I don't know right. why you'd want to do that, but it was uh, it was pretty cool. It was a very slick interface. Uh, they had three characters in it. There was Baraka, Scarlet, and Scorpion. I played as Scarlet and and didn't really play around with the other two. Uh, it seems like a Mortal Kombat game. The finishing blow. So they used to have like a meter you could build up to use x-ray moves. And that's not really the case anymore. It's when your life is below 20%, you get a finishing blow, which mm-hmm. is which is like a, like the x-ray for this, this game. And uh, I got beaten so bad, I couldn't even use it that well. So that kind of sucked. But I'll probably have more thoughts on that when I actually get to play more of the game. But anyway... Uh, it was nice to play around in Mortal Kombat, and uh, I'm excited to play more of it when it actually comes out. Right on. I've also been playing a game for Switch called Baba Is You. Uh, I read about that. It sounds interesting. 15 bucks on Switch or PC right now. I don't know if they're bringing it to other platforms or not yet. Uh, this is a game very much in like the 8-bit 
milieu, uh, top down kind of you. You're a character sometimes called Baba, <laughs> and um, Baba can push things around in a world to solve puzzles. Typically, you have to make your way to a flag. But the thing is, is that there are statements on the screen that are made up of Baba and then is and then you. And that defines Baba as the character you are controlling. And you can push things in and out of the statement to change what's true about it. So there's also wall is stop, which means if you walk against a wall, it will stop you. But if you push the stop off, then you can walk through the wall. You can push the wall part into the Baba is you, where Baba is, and then make it wall is you, and then you are the wall, so you can move where the wall goes. Huh. So, basically, it's a bunch of, like, conditional statements that you get to push around on the screen in order to accomplish the goal. Gotcha. Which is to get to whatever is win. And you can somehow, you can sometimes make it so that, um... Baba is you and Baba is win and that means you automatically win. Like as soon as you push <laughs> that in, that means you win that that level. Uh this game makes me feel the same things that games like Portal and The Witness make me feel. Like mm-hmm. I'm a genius who's discovered fire. <laughs> Cuz like you anytime the wheel. I feel like I break the game as I play it and it's certainly not true. Like I I always have been curious with all of these games whether or not like unanticipated solutions have been found and whether or not they can even tell if that's the case. Yeah. But um, this game certainly has a lot of that going for it, and it's pretty sweet if you like puzzle games. Uh, it's really hard to describe, so if if you want to check I mean, it I think, out. I think you did a pretty good job. It, I, maybe. I understand it better now than I did reading previews about it. Well, and maybe you'd sit down and play it and be like, I don't know what he was talking about, but it... it I, it's a very unique game, and I like it, and uh, it's it gets pretty hard, too. Unless I, I might have also, like, kind of broke sequence a little bit, because I went to... It opened two worlds at once, but For, I wonder if one of them should have... I should have gone to first. So you would say Alex is approve? Yes. I don't know. Alex is by. Oh, are you sure? <laughs> uh, <Baba. laughs> Alex is buying. Baba is you. <laughs> yes, leave... Leave that in. (laughs) (laughs) Really? (laughs) Uh, Yeah. I'm not bisexual, but anyway. Not that that there's anything wrong with that. No, there's not. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. It was just weird for Alex to admit that on the air. (laughs) (laughs) It's a good thing only two people are listening. Right, right. No, that's cool. Oh, wait, that's us probably. Uh, Brian, have you played anything else or no? Um, A very little bit of that other game that starts with a D. Yeah, nobody cares about that. Yeah. yeah whatever. <laughs> we don't need to go into that anymore. We've pretty we've much beaten that dead horse. Yep. I I beat that dead horse every time I get the chance. Yep. <clears throat> Moving along then. Uh do I haven't we, played anything. Do we want to talk about Sekiro? Yeah, let's like talk now? about that now just so we yeah. can get that out of the way. Why don't you guys talk about it? What 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 are your initial impressions of Sekiro? Sekiro Shadows Die Twice is the new game from From Software published by Activision and it is a game that takes place in a uh, in a historical Japanese setting. You are a shinobi who has to uh, kill things. That's all I really know about the story at this point. Uh, but it's in the same vein of Bloodborne and Dark Souls uh, and Demon Souls. Uh, it, it kind of controls similar to those in some ways and different in other ways. And, uh, yeah, Brian, how have you felt about your first hour with the game? Um, for one thing, playing on PC is awesome. Like, playing at 60 frames per second makes those games immediately easier to understand, in my opinion. I've had a lot of stuttering in mine, even really? on PC. Not sure why. I have had zero stuttering. I also left everything at max, so that's probably... I have it all issue. maxed out. Okay. I don't know what my problem is, then. Um, yeah, I mean, it really... For me, it makes a big difference in, like, how well I react to things and, like... What? I'm still laughing about the Alex's bite. 
it just keeps popping up in yeah. my head and it's really funny so <laughs> sorry it made <laughs> sense as i assembled it and the baba is you milieu yeah. yeah it was b-u-y not b-i <laughs> and i just want to explain myself <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was just a good one because you said it and like your face just like you were so in it like you you sold it so hard because i thought about all of that logic that went into it let it be known that john is crying i'm, I'm now. legit i legit have john's tears <laughs> it runs in the family these guys cry a lot it does oh, whether man. we're laughing or saying about things anyway brian holy shit sorry it's fine the it's... game being fluid <laughs> <laughs> like John's tears, yes. Um, and not my sexuality. <laughs> anyway, uh, or well, maybe, or maybe uh, I know. Uh, so the game being at a stable sixty frames is nice. Yes, uh, like I can really understand better and react more appropriately to. Like what I'm seeing on screen, I feel like I was always like a half second behind and shit like Bloodborne and uh, well, that would get me killed. You can lend that also to the control scheme of like that. Those games, all the Souls games have that control scheme where like it has to finish the attack animation. Like there's zero interruption. Yeah. So like you kind of always feel like your fingers are moving faster than the attacks are happening. So. Yeah, yeah th- that's uh, fair. Too. For some, for whatever reason, how they've animated things this time, I just have a much easier understanding of like when I should be blocking or um, counterattacking. Or I'm sure they tweaked it to tie into the samurai thing. Because yeah, your your sword movements are going to be a lot faster with that than like a giant battle axe. So <laughs> I mean, overall, like I would say I was better at Neo as a game than I was at like. Um, oh, fuck. So good. Yeah, yeah. Ne- like I was better at Neo than I was at the Souls games that I tried. Um, just because I thought, like, well, that ran at sixty frames too, so that was nice, and it was like just more fluid. It it felt more like um, responsive to me. <laughs> <laughs> We're done. I just <laughs> anyway. Um, um, so I, I don't know. I really like it so far, but I only played it like an hour. So I guess one of the big things that's different from Dark Souls and Bloodborne is that there's jumping. There's a much more uh, yeah, verticality true. in this game than there has ever been in any of those games. Uh, because you can kind of try to get away with your grappling hook arm. I mean, you could leap over things in bloodborne but it was just like to get from point a to point b well yeah but it wasn't like like jumping in place or anything and this is like you can jump onto someone to stagger them a little bit it's fantastic and and think like so it's it's very and not only that but also like like i don't know there wasn't like there's not a jump button in bloodborne Um, i'm pretty sure it they're sort of yeah they're you can't do it in place, but you can jump over like spots. Yes. Really? Yeah. Like, you can't. Like, how are you doing that? I don't remember. Moving? It's been a long time since I played it, but because I don't like, it's kind of like a hidden move almost. Like they don't fucking tell you how to do it. Hmm. It, like immediately. That's but weird. I don't remember that in, at in all. In Bloodborne. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's it's uh you can't like vertically jump necessarily, but you can, no, you can jump leap over you can jump like, gaps. Gaps. Um by using your dodge button as you move forward, um you can tap the dodge button to jump a gap. It's a, just something. another pain lines. in the ass thing to time. <clears throat> All right. Really. Well, and, yeah. and it's very straightforward in this game. So this game has a button that you press, the X button on the PlayStation controller, the A button on the Xbox controller uh to jump in place and you can jump up against walls and hit a again in order to get a little bit more height uh that type of thing and there's also like a you you have what's called the shinobi prosthetic which is your arm Mm -hmm. and that not only has like a grappling hook system with it but you also get other tools that you can put on it as well i have different combat purposes i haven't gotten any of those other tools yet the grappling hook is fantastic yeah like it changes everything as far as the, how the level layout works. Yeah, because you're not just you know stuck like on a plane and then trying to get to a higher spot by finding a stairway or a ladder that goes up there. Because you can you can wall jump, you can 
use the grappling hook on so many different spots and get up on the roof of buildings and jump down on people like a, a proper ninja game. Yeah, it's it's very nice to be able to scope out the land, which is something that I don't yeah. feel like you could really do in Dark Souls, but I'm sure they're going to find a way to still screw you over in this game with like hidden enemies and things oh, like yeah. that. Oh, yeah, I mean, there was one spot where I thought there were no enemies. I jumped down, there's like three dogs. <laughs> like, yeah. And then another spot, a wild turkey is like the, one of the only th- enemies that has killed me so far. Yep. Yeah, those things, they're, they're huge. They're dangerous. Yeah, well, I underestimated it, which is probably exactly what they assume people would do. Yeah. Uh, it feels very accessible. I don't know if that's just because I know what these games are now, because I've played Bloodborne and played yeah. some Dark Souls, or if it's l- actually different and accessible. <laughs> so I don't know I'm that sure I'll it'll... ever be able to speak to that at this point. I'm sure it will end up being challenging in similar ways but so yeah. far it feels easier to me uh like i progressed like i didn't get far because i didn't play that long but i progressed pretty easily pretty quickly does your heart rate rise oh like, yeah it oh, still yeah. has okay. that effect definitely yeah like i was one hit away from dying for a while because i didn't have any health what uh like potions or whatever and so I just had to go through these like multiple fights with just like one hit away from dying. It was oh, fun. A couple other differences here. You don't lose all of your souls, quote unquote, every time you die. You only lose half, and it's only some of the time. Uh, and you only lose half of what is on the way to the next skill point, mm-hmm. which you immediately get as soon as you reach that threshold. You don't have to go and spend it on anything at like yeah, whatever. And then. Uh, there is a mechanic that allows you to come back to life after you've been killed and you either get it by resting or if you kill enough enemies, you might be able to come back and resurrect twice. Yeah. Uh, that type of thing. Maybe there's more later on. I don't know. So those things also kind of change how the game flows a little bit. And if you die more, the NPCs in the world start getting sick and will not be as useful to you. Which is yeah, because you start getting a, a status effect called like dry rot or something like that. I think right? it's called dragon, dragon rot. rot. Dragon rot. They are getting dragon rot. You're getting an item where if you have more of them, that means the world has gotten sicker. Yeah, like you're basically given it after you come back to life enough times or something. Gotcha. That so. there was similar. There was something similar to that in Dark Souls too, if I recall. Like when okay. you die, it as you. The more times you die, it would actually like penalize you by taking away your max life bar. Okay. Uh, to some extent, That's and you annoying. would you would appear as like a dead zombie ish style character as opposed to like your normal clean like looking self. Clean so, faces, yeah. man. Interesting. So you, you you would have like a beard maybe instead of being like clean shaven. N- no, you you'd look dead. Oh, okay. You'd look like a you'd look like a zombie. Yeah. But uh, I've been playing Sekiro on stream. Uh, there's currently two nights of me playing it up on Twitch. I'm going to call the series uh, Sekiro. Alex dies continually. <laughs> and um, it's been going well. Repeatedly. Yeah. So it's uh, it's it's been fun, and I look forward to playing more of it. Yeah, yeah same here. I, uh, I almost bought it last night because we went to Target, and I have a gift card. But because you guys had said that there were issues with it on console like frame rate issues or something I, well and I, i've heard on even on playstation 4 pro and xbox one x that uh it does not run at a smooth frame rate yeah that bothers me and so. i'm having trouble with it on my 1080 ti i don't know why like i could probably tweak things and make it better or maybe i got a bum update or something on my driver i don't um, know what actually the deal is. there was one windows update that had rolled out that actually killed the performance in certain games so but i don't know that could be a, i don't if it's been fixed entirely or if you you can you can look up which one it is exactly and uninstall it okay if necessary so that that could be why i'm having an issue there but i think uh other than those moments it, it seems pretty smooth overall right on, on. on on pc like, so could have something to do with streaming at the same time too that's possible that's possible i don't know but it it's I, I yeah so we can't speak to it on console if if you were right. looking for a smooth souls experience 
this game still might not be it and on, on the console world con- I, in the console world i have had zero hiccups the only weird thing i mean i guess it makes sense for a game like this it seems to be just locked to 60 frames per second yeah because yeah. there's no option to uncap in the options and there's no uh like v-sync option either okay but that can probably be edited yeah, I Why mean, not? yeah, people people mess with Dark Souls, so I'm sure there's people familiar with how they make these games work. But yeah, looks good, runs good, sounds good. Yeah. He's fun. It is fun. Cool. Let's hit some news. All right. Numero uno. So now that Brian can read, he literally posted every news story that came, that <laughs> came uh, out this week. You guys were slouching this week, so I found some news. We have honestly 15 stories. <laughs> well, we don't have to necessarily do them all. This one's definitely we worth can just, mentioning. We can just zoom through a lot of uh, these, to be honest. Halo with Master Chief Collection is coming to the PC sometime soon. They didn't really say when for sure. They're bringing <laughs> out Reach first and then they're yes. going through chronologically. Well, It is going to be on both the Windows Store and Steam. It is not play anywhere. You do not get it for free if you already own it digitally on yeah. Xbox. It might be part of Game Pass. We can't really figure yeah. that out. I don't I don't know. Um however, this is also newsworthy too because Reach was not part of the Master Chief collection originally and it's going to be added to the console version for free. Reach is like the one that everyone loves, right? Uh ODST ooh. was the like really really popular one and reach yeah no like odst was like the even people who hate halo like odst why and then reach that was one of my least favorites reach was the one that was like this is good but if you don't like halo you're not going to care about it reach was really good um single player wise and i don't care about any of this and the firefight mode was (laughs) awesome but uh because it had firefight just like odst did um but the multiplayer for Reach, I thought, was not very good. Yeah. I feel like the pinnacle for that was three, and actually five has really good multiplayer. Yeah, so now now that this is the first time three and beyond will be available on PC, I think yeah. people are quite happy about it. And this apparently is the death of the Epic Game Store because it's coming to Steam. But yeah, I doubt People that, are dumb. But and it's, it, it probably will sell pretty well. I think well. Epic Game Store is going to be shooting itself in the foot. So. Oh, and they're actually rolling it out slowly, starting with Reach. Yeah. yeah. And then going from there, I guess. Cool. Although well, Reach was the last out of... Well, it came out, I think, before Halo 4. And canonically, it is the earliest, I think, in the yeah. series. But anyway... Brian, um, we can skip this one. Somebody made episode one racer in Unreal Engine four, and it looks very pretty. Yeah, cool. I mean, it's kind of cool. Uh, Sega has a new game coming out called um, After Cocaine Arrest. Uh, yes, <coughs> that's what it is. No, uh, what is it called? A Judgment. No, yes. it's not Judgment. It's a different one, I think. No. He was in Judgment, right? Yes. Sega has a game called Judgment coming out. There's an actor in it who okay. voices a Yakuza person who has been arrested on cocaine charges. And in Japan, uh, drugs are taken extremely seriously. Drugs are bad. Okay. Yeah, and, uh, I, I had to read a whole article after I read this article because I didn't know the whole history behind that and how big of a deal it is there. But apparently it's a really big deal. Yeah, to like do even drugs. even weed in Japan is not yes. good. Like you, you Paul McCartney was banned for a long time for <laughs> yeah. trying to bring weed in. So they are <laughs> Sega halted sales of this game. They're also patching his performance out of the game. Square Enix Damn. is patching the same dude's performance out of the uh kingdom hearts game that he was that just came out because he was in it as well so this guy's life is basically over in japan for a while i hear you can make comebacks from this but it takes a long i heard cocaine's a hell of a drug (laughs) (laughs) apparently it's worth losing everything for yep all right microsoft now lets you stream pc games to an xbox one and use a controller this is through an app on the uh xbox that's pretty cool uh, what is it called? Haven't Wireless tried it display yet. app. Have not tried it out either. Um, because I don't have an Xbox anymore. Seems like a cool idea. Uh, this, nice. this is the only reason I don't want to get rid of my Xbox because I kind of just want to tie this uh, like together on my Xbox and move my Xbox downstairs and then I can play the division on 
the TV downstairs. I'm curious if this allows things like HDR to be used or not. Uh, I would, I don't know. if that's the case, because like the thing about the Steam Link to me was that I wasn't going to be able to use HDR through it, and it's not going to be 4K on my TV anymore, so I don't necessarily care about it. But if this means that I can play those games at uh, 4K and HDR or whatever, even if it's 1440p and scaled, upscaled or something like that, uh, that would be interesting. But I don't know that... Uh, I'm sure somebody's tried it out yet, but that wasn't in this uh, Verge story. So Cool. Uh, all right. We've got Kotaku uh, has an, uh, had a story saying that Valve announced an upgrade to Steam Link called Steam Link Anywhere. It is basically the same thing as this Xbox thing, but it is through Steam. You will be able to play your Steam games through several different uh, apps including on android but phones not iphones not iphones because they didn't let that app come out on iphone uh i uh, apple didn't not steam boo but uh yeah no it's very cool it is this allows it to because previously you could do steam streaming with these things on your local network but mm-hmm. now this is going to allow you to do it from wherever you are yeah that that's the big news here is that they've figured out how to compress things enough to to uh, play over the internet. Yes. Cool. So, awesome. Uh, EA paid Ninja, the streamer, $1 million to stream Apex Legends. Which, um, that's just crazy. Yeah, that sucks. I don't attribute any of that to like the success of the game, though. I think they wasted their money. Pro- probably, <laughs> like I apparent, like it might have been. That guy's an idiot. I, I only. I I, it's hard for me to say. I yeah, guess I don't really personally know. He's not really my style, but whatever. We're not the people watching Ninja <laughs> or PewDiePie. Dude, or, dude made like ten million dollars last year playing Fortnite. Like, eat shit, dude. Like, don't pay him any more money. He doesn't need any more money. <laughs> but, but he has such a big following, clearly, that they thought having him play would draw people to play more. Yeah, until it comes out he's, a, he's like a racist or something. Well, then it doesn't really matter anymore. Something bad's going to come out about him, and they're going to be like, oh, we uh, we retract all previous uh, support for Ninja as a contributor to our platform. Blah, 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 Logan blah. Paul's still out there after showing dead bodies in the Japanese suicide yeah. forest, so I'm apparently everybody's untouchable now. PewDiePie is causing mass shootings, so. Yeah, basically. Fuck all these guys. Yep. Get them all off the air. Anyway, enough about that one. Uh, Konami's making video games again, kind of the sort same of video nine. games okay. they already made. What's in this? This is cool. Let's talk about this. So they're putting out <laughs> a bunch of anniversary collections that have a bunch of old arcade games. Yeah, and one are. of them, they're arcade classics, including things like Haunted Castle, Typhoon, uh, all the ones people Life don't Force, really care Twin about. Twin Boo, a bunch of different don't, stuff. Don't it's twenty dollars coming out in April eighteenth. What else? What else comes? They're out? also doing a Contra collection that has Contra, <laughs> Super Contra, Super C, and scroll, Contra Three. Scroll up. Along with four other Contra games that they have not revealed yet. What else didn't they reveal? And that's it, right? Uh, these what? are going to come out on Switch, PS4, Xbox One, and Steam, which is awesome. Uh, this Kotaku article says, "Please do not ask why there isn't also a Metal Gear Anniversary Collection." What's what's our next go, news, go, news topic? Go. Yeah. So next up, there's not. No, never mind. Uh, they're also putting out a Castlevania collection. They are, aren't they? Right now. You know what that means? What? You know what's coming? What? Symphony of the Switch. Uh, maybe. Uh, I kind of doubt uh, it. Uh, uh, Symphony of the Switch. No, just wait for it, man. I kind of doubt if it. If they're bringing this out, there's no way they won't bring that. See, but look at these four games. You've but got they Castlevania. Have coming okay, soon, you got like the first one. I understand. Listen, so. listen to my my reasoning. Okay, here. okay. Right. listening. You have Castlevania, Castlevania Two, Belmont's Revenge. First Castlevania is an NES game. Uh, Castlevania Two is a Game Boy game. Uh, Castlevania Three, Dr- Dracula's Curse is a Nintendo game, and Super Castlevania Four. And then, and then what's Nintendo underneath game. it? You've got four more games supposedly well, what coming do you think to this those collection. Are? It could be Rondo of Blood. It Probably. could be Bloodlines. It could be um, it could be any of the Game Boy Advanced games. It could be any of the DS games. It could be literally and it could have been the Wii game. Why do you have to shit on all my? Dreams? I'm just saying, don't get your hopes up. The hopes are up. Don't get your hopes it's up. It's too late. Even if they do, these are probably all terrible fucking ports Shh. of all of these games, and it's <sighs> not going to be worth buying. Oh, so sad. 
I'm a positive person. How's that Super Nintendo Castlevania? It looks, it's a good one. It's good. You, if you want to see something ridiculous, watch Tom play that. And I'll I tell you I why. Did. <clears throat> Didn't he play it here? He did. Tom, Tom will beat that game in one sitting. He was trying faster to do than that any when, game when you've he was ever here seen for your bachelor party. Oh my god, it's ridiculous. It's so great. I just so want to take take a look here, real quick. All right, the chronological. Uh, okay, not not in the fictional chronology, but the actual. No, let's go through that too. The so mid, the Midwest Castlevania nerds. Oh, podcast. there's a lot of games. Yeah, Dude, there's a this crap is one load of the of most games, prolific okay? series like ever made. It's so good. So and the I've first never eight, played one all the way through. We've got Castlevania. Then there's Simon's Quest. There's Castlevania: The Adventure from Game Boy. There's Dracula's Curse, which is the third one on Nintendo. You've got Belmont's Revenge, which is two on the Game Boy. Super Castlevania Four. You've got Bloodlines, which is the Sega Genesis game. You've got Dracula X, which is Rondo of Blood. Oh, Symphony of the Night definitely. One, has the two, best three, rating. four, five, six, seven, eight. That is the first eight Castlevania games that were released, and then, all of which and are then, before. And then, <laughs> and then. What they're going to do is, is they're going to release Symphony of the Night Special Edition. It's going to come with yeah. a fucking sword and a cape. <laughs> It'll be 60 bucks. I, I'll pay $100 for it. I don't give a fuck. I just want to play that game on my Switch. You know, I hope I hope you're right. I hope you're right. I hope you're right. Too. Everyone pray. But there's also some really good, like, the uh, a lot of the Game Boy Advance Castlevanias are quite good, so it would be nice to have a good way to play those. And, well, um, yeah, because they came after Symphony of the Night, which they tried to mimic. And yeah, pretty much. And uh, some of the, the DS ones are really good. People swear by Order of Ecclesia, which is the third DS one that came out. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to knock Lords of Shadow or the second Lords of Shadow. Like, those games are good, but they're different part. They're like a different set of lore for Castlevania. Yeah, and I, like, I think... Uh, I but think those, those, if you have not played those games, they're beautiful. There's something to be said about them sticking to, like, the 2D milieu oh, with these for collections, sure. probably. I, I mean, I still, to, like, in, in having played Dark Souls and Bloodborne... If they made a new Castlevania game in the vein of those yeah. Souls games, you, I think you would make a lot of people really happy. Yeah, that would be interesting. Like if they you, just need to hire from basically software. Basically just like, put Alucard in a Dark Souls game and people yes. would be like, oh my yeah. god. Have from software develop Castlevania Symphony of the Night 3D and Konami can publish it. That's what Konami needs to be doing is just licensing Just publishing all their, their, all their franchises. I guess they yeah. just really Which, hate money. This isn't in here, <laughs> but there was a Nintendo Indies Direct thing, and uh, the people who made Crypt of the Necrodancer, which is a roguelike uh, rhythm-ish game, uh, got the Zelda license. So oh, they yeah. are playing, they're making that. a game like Crypt of the Necrodancer with Zelda characters, That's and pretty that cool. is phenomenal. Awesome for Nintendo to start doing crazy stuff like that. Uh, but anyway, Konami's making games. That's cool. The Oculus Rift S promises higher resolutions for PC gaming without external sensors. Going to be available this spring for $399.99. Uh, yeah, this is the second gen Oculus. This seems like a good deal. It really does. Yeah. It for the fact that it's only going to take like two USB ports instead of thirty-five is fantastic. Two, like one, probably. Maybe one. I don't know. Does it? Does it do its room scaling using the cameras on the front of the face? I believe that's how it does. That's it. Yeah. Cool. So you don't need the towers anymore, right? That's no. the whole point. It's, that is it's the point. not wireless, but it's only one like lightweight wire um, onto the headset. Yeah, they right. changed the whole design of the headset, which is it's a little more well the strap design is more like the PSVR. Yeah, yep. Um yeah, they had partnered with a company, I don't remember what the company name was to design a better oh Lenovo to design a better headband. Yeah. Um, I, I still stand by the PSVR as a great device, uh, but this really intrigues me. The screen resolution's better, so there should be less screen door effect. It's not as good as the um I don't think it's as good as the uh, HTC Vive Pro or yeah. whatever, but I mean that thing's like eight hundred dollars just for the headset. Yeah, yeah, none of the none of the and, controllers. I mean, I like that. The, I always thought these controllers were better than the HTC ones because they actually have analog sticks, mm -hmm. which is useful for some games. Uh, these are redesigned a bit from the original Oculus, though, but functionally they look the same. <sighs> yeah. It looks cool, and I'm excited for the inside-out tracking revolution. Like, I want all of the VR headsets to start. Yeah. I want to know what what uh, 
HTC is going to do with this. I want to know what Sony's going to do with this. Well, I don't think you included it in any of our news links this week, but Sony just patented a wireless uh, yeah. system. Somebody, so somebody nice. saw a wireless VR system patent for Sony, so I, that's I'm awesome. excited that this is happening just because it shows they didn't give up on it, too, and they're yeah. definitely one of the biggest players in this right now. Well, yeah, I think you, you thank PlayStation for that. I mean, the success yeah. of the PSVR has pushed VR gaming into living rooms all over the place. I, I pay attention to the PSVR subreddit. There's people buying it, and, and, like, they celebrate it. Every time somebody buys a VR headset, they're like, guys, I joined the squad today. Yeah. And, like, they post their whole spiel of what they picked up. And everyone on there is like, oh, good for you, man. Like, it's like this huge community that's constantly growing daily. And they all like, buy all of the games yeah, they because buy they're everything. starving for VR content. Yeah, it's yeah. crazy. It's so, I mean, they're th- thanks for... Thanks, thanks, Sony, for doing something so, right. I mean, I mean, on the gaming front, absolutely. I know that like Oculus and Vive are also pretty big in the world of like we're architects and want to show you what your new building is going to be like. I mean, and all yeah. kinds of other strange, interesting uh, applications of VR tech, which is cool too. And I'm glad that that those both the gaming and the other weird uses are giving like a good use case for VR to continue to th- to grow and thrive. Um, yeah, I mean, I may consider one of these again someday. Like, I just, the old one, there was just enough lacking with it to where I didn't mind giving it up for yeah. now. But I definitely like the VR thing, and I would like to try it again sometime yeah. after it's matured. Indeed. For sure. Uh, that, oh. Yeah, this is really exciting to me if this actually happens. So uh, there's been an update to the story too, but basically, Lucasfilm Games has uh, is is a is a division of Disney that is working with third parties oh. in terms of making, eh. uh, you know, Star Wars games. After other... being disappointed with EA's performance regarding <laughs> Star Wars, Lucasfilm <laughs> Lucasfilm Games has been reinstated to. Well, uh, and that's basically what people were taking the news as. But it looks like this IGN update says since publishing, IGN has spoken to a representative from Lucasfilm who clarified that Lucasfilm Games has existed and helped to ensure games meet Lucasfilm standards ever since the closure of Lucas Arts. Any job postings for Lucasfilm Games are due to Disney wanting to make sure their game scene is staffed appropriately for any Lucasfilm properties. Mm. Disney as a whole is still focused on third-party license development and are still very committed in working with EA. It just sounds to me like they're going to be making way more Star Wars games. Disney constantly goes back and forth on, like, should we make in-house games or should we not? And it's the most infuriating thing in the world. Um, but. I'm surprised they let Square go this long with the Kingdom Hearts thing, to be honest with and, you. And, the like, the weird thing is that, like, everybody who loves... Like, everything I've heard about Kingdom Hearts 3 is that people are like, well, all the Disney stuff is pretty, like, standard, but all of the good stuff is the Square Enix stuff. Yeah. And so, uh, which isn't necessarily what was true about all the previous Kingdom Hearts. But, um, yeah, we've got so much news to go through. Yeah, just keep going. All right, uh, Cuphead is coming to the Nintendo Switch. That's cool. It's really cool. Really cool. Uh, very point points to Microsoft working with Nintendo, which is crazy because uh, they like the the developer of Cuphead told Microsoft they wanted to do this, and Microsoft worked with Nintendo to make it happen. Cool. In terms of the India Xbox platform, I'd be more likely to pick it up on Switch. Yeah. No, that's that's a cool. I mean, idea. really though, I I don't know if I'll ever pick it up though because it's so damn hard, from what I've heard. <laughs> yeah. Uh, as of the 20th, sea of, Thie- sea of Thieves is a year old. There's also a whole lot of content that's coming to it, including harpoons and more quests, PvP arenas, and the like. Uh, so this there is all stuff that is... Quest campaigns, I feel, is okay. the big yeah. feature. Because people have wanted a type of cab- campaign in the game for a long time. And the only thing that they've had so far is like limited time. Limited time events. Yeah. yeah. But this will be like a more... I assume more like a traditional story. Yeah. Um, which is cool. And the, the PvP arenas thing, it, it operates out separately, like outside of the main like game world. Okay. That you normally load into. And they have things balanced slightly differently. Like, I guess you can attack the masts on people's ships to slow the ships down. Interesting. And um, there's just like a- extra added mechanics to the combat. Um, that sounds super cool to me too, because that's a fun part of the game. Yeah, 
Uh, there's also hunting, fishing, and harpoons mm -hmm. that are coming to the game, and yeah. everything's going to be coming on April 30th. Yeah. So, so I definitely hope we revisit that and do some streaming again. Yeah, absolutely. It's a really fun game it to seems stream. Seems like a good opportunity to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, all right. So Epic has locked down more store exclusives, including uh, Obsidian's The Outer Worlds and Remedy's Control. So yeah. these were announced at GDC. Apparently, like they were working on uh, Steam achievements for The Outer Worlds up until like four hours before this announcement. <laughs> which is insane to me. But, uh, John, you... Oh, there were a few other... Uh, Quantic Dream is bringing Heavy Rain, Beyond Two Souls, and Detroit to PC through the Epic Store exclusively That's pretty wild to me. Yeah. I'm sure they'll sell the, uh, those. I mean, they're not the... Uh, we don't think they're the best games, but yeah. they are unique enough to where there are people on PC that will absolutely want to buy those. It's certainly... Uh, a story and some something that people should and I mean the outer worlds like a lot of people like even like some people at work and stuff have been like yeah that game looks super cool I can't wait for that um, yeah it's it's space um, Skyrim <laughs> so I think I think that'll do well for them John you mentioned something about them shooting themselves in the foot yeah well I, I just think uh, so one there was a report about them like scraping steam data privately and they claim that they're not actually doing that but there have been other people saying that they are like it's actually <laughs> happening like they're just trying to hide it uh which is not steam cool. data in terms of like what was like, it like like user data games that you own and yeah how much you're playing them and well, probably the epic like is? I, yeah the epic game store is scraping your steam data hmm. so i don't i don't know the traction behind any of that i just read a few reports about it like briefly just to skim over it because i don't want i'm not I don't want to use Epic Game Store if I don't have to because I've heard it's not very like like everyone it's, online complained about it. <laughs> it works fine. It's just super bare bones. Like yeah, I'm so used to like Steam adding crazy cool new features like every every time they do a beta update, which is like every yeah. Other like here's how to install the titty patch on your anime. Um, game. I'm also just in general like against having to have like so many different accounts we've gone over this before like yeah. i'm so yeah. tired of it like you I'm can't just... remember the passwords for the accounts you have right exactly the ones that i mean well forced with to make the, all the stuff on my pc i definitely just stay logged in yeah well, but too, even so but... they like kick you out for random reasons yeah. every once in a while like, oh we had an update like... and you have to re-log in and then i have to come up with like another like 18 character every, password I mean, with really like the six real capital reason letters is... and a couple of symbols and numbers and Hieroglyphics and emoji. Mm -hmm. Your name, your serial number, <laughs> how tall you are, whether you're not you're susceptible to any diseases. <laughs> the real problem is we just need a better way to do passwords. No, that's yeah. not the real problem. The real problem is like, if it ain't if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Like, I didn't see anything wrong with Steam. Maybe developers saw something wrong with Steam. If it's that's a the business. Case, like, if you see a successful version of that, you you want to get in on that too. I I get it, but like, you you're not gonna do it better than them. You, they might. At I mean, some point, according to developers, they already are. <laughs> they're, they're, <laughs> yeah, they're giving, giving, the developers, they're giving more money. developers more money. But if the developers would just like release the games themselves, like I'm sure there's ways well, of doing that. Like, yeah. Do you want a launcher for every single, yeah. for every single publisher? You're you're asking for no, a not, you play for asking, literally every. No, yeah, what, I'm, what I'm asking for is for me to click, double click the icon for a game on the desktop of my computer, <laughs> and it just fucking launches like it used to. Why do we have all this other convoluted bullshit happening all the fucking time? It's annoying and it's obnoxious, and I'm sick of well, it. Well, like, because because you're. Uh, like the the stop defending this nonsense no like, but listen listen things like steam and the epic game store give you sdks that allow you to connect to people and play video games together like that is why these things exist yeah i i gotta say like steam has made playing games with other people so much easier than how i had it back in the day you know when the wheel was first invented steam and <laughs> and you had to like literally find other settlements of people to play video it games it was with difficult that. But yeah, and no. it was so dark everywhere. On and top of that, like this, the like Steam's existence allows me to delete my game and not worry about like never being able to find a copy of it again. Like it until Steam shuts down. Until because, Steam shuts because down, because the Epic Game Store puts it in the ground, right? They're not going to put it in the ground. But what if it did? Is what but I'm it's not like. Going what do you? To. What happens when that happens? Then <sighs> we're all screwed anyway. Look at what happened with the Wii Shop Channel. Like that stuff just got locked down this past. Or like two months ago, and people were angry about it because they can't access those games that they bought anymore. And that sucks. There's a good chance that that, and rather than like closing down entirely, one of them would buy out the other, or yeah, all their data would be migrated over. Like, 
I mean, there's games that I buy. Um, they have nothing to do with Steam, but I still have Steam code for them to activate them and shit. Right. And yeah, I don't it, know. There's... I just, I'm fine with there being more places to buy things. I like going to Target. I like going to I, see. I like Best the competitive Buy. nature of like Green Man, where like they have the same games and it's a Steam code or an Ubisoft code or whatever, but I can get it for like fifteen percent cheaper. Like I'm cool with that. Like okay, let's let's just stick to that format. But you know, one of those companies is still getting some money from it. That's somehow. fine. I would I imagine. Care. I don't. Whatever. Forget it. It doesn't matter. My opinion doesn't matter on that shit. It does suck having a billion launchers for sure. But it also doesn't make much difference on our modern PCs with 16 gigs or more of RAM. It's I, not affecting. I don't have them all open at one time anyway. You know, I do like, most of the time, and it doesn't make any difference. You're making Bitcoin for everybody. Yeah, sure. <laughs> uh, all right. Somebody played through all five Soulsborne games right before Sekiro came out and beat them without being hit once. That's, That's just insane. Stupid. I'm just angry about it. We don't have to talk about it. <laughs> they did it in 18 hours. That's even dumber. Uh, Kerry Tagawa, who played Shang Tsung in the Mortal Kombat movie in 1995, will be reprising his role uh, in Mortal Kombat 11, which is just phenomenal. Your soul <laughs> is mine. And that's <laughs> sweet, so one of the things I didn't talk about with Mortal Kombat 11 is that in like the loot box type thing that you can get in that game because you can like unlock gear that changes how you look and also gives you some like bonuses in certain modes and stuff like that. You can also change just like in Overwatch, your like intro, mm -hmm. that type of thing, or like not intro necessarily, but like you can change your intro and in, in, in how you interact with characters in Mortal Kombat. So you know that like they either need to give that one to everybody, that your soul is mine from the get go, or it's going to be like a platinum, like mm -hmm. nobody has this and you're awesome if you do type thing. Uh, but no, it's this is so cool. Uh, did they say if this is, uh, he, he's a DLC character. So you, you have to, um, you have to pay DLC to actually play as him, but it also looks uh, like he's going to be your host and guide, uh, so, yeah. to the crypt. Either way you'll game. get to enjoy his likeness and voice. Yeah. It's just fantastic. It's so good. Kerry Tagawa is such a badass, and that Shang Tsung is immortal. <laughs> Not to mention Shang Tsung is normally immortal, but. Yeah. <laughs> Finally, the biggest story that's also going to take us an hour to discuss before we've even talked about the division. Probably make one or all three of us angry in some way. Google has announced Stadia. Yes. It is their streaming video game platform uh, that we play tested for them a couple months ago. Yeah. And only John got a free copy of the game out of it. No, I got one too. Fuck. What? <laughs> you guys don't even want to play it. I want to play it. I do actually want to play it. I just haven't had a chance because I've been so busy playing the division. Why didn't they give me um, one? Anyways, uh, Google Stadia, the streaming platform, they announced it. They've announced hardware as well. They announced their controller, which they showed off. It, yeah, it is. they um, are only releasing a controller in terms of hardware. Otherwise, you'd be playing this thing through your Chrome Chromecast, browser, Chromecast. Your cell phone, yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Anything that can run Chrome essentially is what they're looking at. And it has um, the controller runs over Wi-Fi signal. So that's how it's usable. Uh, with yeah. Your systems. Because they are removing the idea that you need to the input needs to hit your computer and then go straight to the cloud. They're just going to put your yeah. input straight into the Less cloud. Less input lag. Which is probably cutting down milliseconds. But that's what you need to it, cut down yeah. in this game. So, yeah. Um, this looks really cool. One of the things they showed off was the ability to, if you're streaming on YouTube, your viewers can actually queue in to see to play against you using Stadia. So if you're using Stadia to stream your live play, you can set up a line of people. Like if you're playing NBA 2K, yeah, you can set up a lineup of people who are going to verse you in the next following or rounds. Or like Mortal Kombat too. Or I guess, fighting would games, be like a, yeah, like yeah. things like that. Like you're, just, you're literally putting your quarter on the arcade game. I guess we we could have our squad of people playing Rainbow Six over this, and other people could line up to play against us in a five v five sort of situation, which seemed really cool. Um, the article that we have here in the news is talking about some of the backlash regarding it. Uh, just, you know, the main questions being, um, you know, what happens when, 
when you know with with mods like are you able to mod these games probably not who cares like you don't have to mod games all the time like who gives a shit like just play the fucking game the way it was given to you um what happens to game preservation this is kind of a big deal because like you know what if uh a game stops being supported by a developer like is it not going to be available like on this on stadia anymore or how's that going to work what if you buy your your lifetime subscription to stadia and then google shutters its doors like two days days later like they do on everything they do so there there is some backlash (laughs) to this platform uh but i think this is gonna like stir up some serious shit in the console world i think oh yeah you know it's really great it was also cool when it was playstation now and it was also cool when it was on live like 10 years ago but those we didn't they, they, we didn't necessarily have the infrastructure for those yeah, things but we kind of have does. that now and we still don't and google though. so i don't know if you listened to the split screen episode about it where I they didn't. talked to the the main guy i don't remember his name now but uh you know they, they he wouldn't was go over Phil Harrison maybe? yeah he wouldn't go over pricing or anything like that but he did say like you know for areas where the internet is not the greatest it only takes 15 mps or whatever That's to get a lot that's not a lot for shitty areas. That's that's a lot for somebody like Zach who's playing over like satellite yeah, like, internet. I think. Okay, like, it's part. Anyways, now, fifteen it's, megabytes it's per second delivery right? down in order to have, uh, 1080p with like sixty frames a second. Like that's still r- pretty fucking good. Like all things considered. But I want four K. And if you want four K, you need thirty, which is also affordable in some areas. Yeah. So, that's. They've taken that into account to some extent, which is important. So, you know, I, I don't want to shit all over this yet. I think it's going to be awesome to watch this bloom and see what happens with it. I do think it's going to like people are going to flock away from consoles for this sort of thing, I think, because if, if you're already paying for Internet service or whatever, uh, this is something that like you don't have to pay for, uh, you know, PlayStation Now or Xbox Live to be a part of like these games that are running on PC platforms. You're not paying extra to play them it's, online other than the fact that you're paying for the service of Stadia. It's going to live and die on that price because you don't need to buy a three hundred dollar box to play these. But yet Google still needs to pay for that infrastructure and the back end. Right. So, so and w- like if it's a subscription model, they got to pay to have I, the games on their service. I yeah. think, I think they, they have will have, have good games. I think they will have some form of subscription model for it. One of the things that was discussed is like Ubisoft has been dealing with them directly for a while now. So has um, id Software. And I think Bethesda has been talking to them about the pricing structure of these sorts of things. So I think a subscription oh. service is available. Uh, not sure at the price point on that yet, but also the ability to like purchase the license Piece of a game, purchase a game, yeah. is, will be there, and also the ability to buy like hours at a time. If you want to just try out a specific game for like an hour, you can buy an hour's worth of playtime on a specific game and just try it out. Like that's awesome, especially for people like us who have to play every fucking game that comes out. It gives us the opportunity to not like just throw away our wallet every time a new game comes out. Depending on the price, yeah. Yeah, it, it will be dependent on the price across uh, the board. That You said it's software. The, that new Doom game is one of the games they announced. Doom yeah. Eternal. Yep. Yeah. yeah, I'm so psyched for that game. <laughs> I uh, am skeptical. Like, it, it's great. As, as I, anybody as should be. The only person here who's got gigabit internet, it's going to work fine for me. But, like, does that mean that it's going to be enough to actually grow and for a lot of people to use it and actually become like a platform but i i think with the amount of back and forth they're having with the developers to make this work it's something they're they're trying to make a better investment in I, i'm i'm gonna buy one of those controllers i'm gonna try this out i'm super pumped on it i don't need to i, I have a pc that's powerful enough to play all these games what if the controller costs as much as a console <laughs> <laughs> i don't think a hundred dollar controller i don't think it will <laughs> Uh, if it did, it better be made out of gold. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and here's the thing. Like, yes, this is totally where things are headed in the future. Microsoft is about to announce they're, all they're of doing this at E3. Like, PlayStation's working on that shit. The Steam thing. I mean, it, streaming content is like the I, thing. I'm fine with more options. I don't like the idea of moving to streaming for everything yeah. eventually in the future. Yeah. Uh, that worries me for As somebody who, reasons. like, I just this past week, I sat down to watch The Dark Knight through my my apple tv and i have a 4k hdr copy of it on itunes because i bought the 4k blu-ray set for christopher nolan i sat down and watched it i was like god this really doesn't look that good and then i popped in the 4k blu-ray and it's a 
huge world of difference. Oh, yeah. It makes like, it is the biggest difference in the world. And I mean, the biggest thing issue I have, like, from that test we did, it was the sound. It's not. It, it sounded like, like Sound garbage. makes a big difference. Like, Blu-ray sound is fantastic. Mm -hmm. And it is unbeatable. Like, yeah. It's. So, uh, like, there's still certain, like, they, they are definitely figuring out new ways to to compress these things whenever pied piper comes through with their audio <laughs> compression system i'm sure it'll be well, I mean, greatly appreciated but after that last season looks like they're doing well uh so. it it like they just need to hire back tj miller <laughs> <laughs> but no he, uh, didn't he go and never mind i'm interested to see where he got goes. me too and now nobody cares about him so yeah that's fine i mean he's funny but i don't think he's, he's also tj miller so um, I'm happy he played a much less significant the role show in Deadpool too. Just yeah. as good without him. Oh yeah, for sure. Thomas Middleditch all day. Uh, and Kumail. Kumail's also very good. Yeah. Um, they're all good. Yeah. No, I'm interested to see what Microsoft's play is now. They like Phil. Uh, Phil Spencer was after the announcement was basically just like, they had a big GDC, but we're gonna have a big E3. Oh. And so, yeah. Well, it's um, easy to have a big E3 when everybody else dropped when out. You have, when you have the whole place to <laughs> when yourself. You're, you're just <laughs> Microsoft. When you're the only fucking major developer it's like, doing anything. It's like, like you could cut to the press conference and it's Creed shreds and you hear one person <laughs> in the background clapping. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's all doing like that. <laughs> Do you think they're just going to rent all the floor space that everyone else they has should. abandoned? They're going to hire they Scott Stapp to come in and play the theme song. No, you know, no. What, <laughs> you know what the dumb thing is? Is that there's probably just going to be a big, like, Sony wall that's in Sony's place where they would have been if they uh, came to E3 this year. And it'll say, "See us on Sony Direct tomorrow at noon." Yeah, exactly. Like that's maybe it'll yeah. just be booth babes passing out flyers. For, also for the probable. Sony for the Sony Direct. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, Google Tune Stadia. In. We should announce that too. That Sony's moving to a Nintendo Direct style model for their announcements. It looks like they yeah they announced uh, something for the I think Tuesday is it the twenty sixth. I think or? so. Yeah, it's something this next week. They're yeah, going to be doing a a live. Uh, a live thing of a Bob to talk about what's going on. Like yeah, I don't know what they're going to wow. be doing like that, but um, you should hear <laughs> <laughs> It should it should be interesting to you, see. You said Creed shreds, man. I, can't. I know. I, I'm sorry. I have to. I apologize anyway. to everybody listening. Uh, let's talk about the Division Two. Alex, you have not played it at all. Uh, I played the a little bit of the beta. The beta, but right? Did, you didn't buy the game at all, no, right? No, okay. I, I kind of after Anthem, uh, I, I'm kind of like I don't need to play these games anymore. Right on. All right, so the Division Two <laughs> is a third person looter <laughs> shooter, cover shooter, Just uh, looter, PVE VP all over the place. You play it on your computer. You play it on your computer, looter shooter, computer. <laughs> uh, it's also available on PS4 I play and with Xbox. This dude we do play together. We have a clan. It's the fun squad. If you want to join, hit us up. Uh, so this is the greatest looter shooter game I've ever played. So so uh, it, this is a game a la the First Division or Destiny or Anthem. It's an MMORPG that takes place in Washington, D.C., where you are basically like taking taking control of a world that has gone awry after a chemical outbreak has taken place that happened on black friday yes yeah and this this takes place like by money six I months think. later essentially called the dollar flu I yeah believe. although most people use cards nowadays so it's kind of unrealistic yeah but that's <laughs> yeah so anyways um this game's fantastic everything about it is great um there are slight bugs here and there but this is the most polished uh looter shooter mmorpg experience i have ever played yeah, um, I had it crash once when I first started playing, and I think it was just the video card drivers were not updated. It's never crashed ever again after that. Yeah, um, I, I don't even like. I can't. All right, that's it. We'll see you next yeah. time. Yep. Just kidding. No, uh, I don't even know what I what because like, I feel like I all I want to talk about is how awesome it is, and okay. it's awesome. All like right. the music, so, the music is intense. Like when you get in these firefights. You get this epic metal music or like you know, like the, this industrial sounding techno going where it's it just like gets you fucking amped when you're you know, when There's, you're just. I agree, it is very well put together. It's definitely it feels like the most complete of these games, especially at, coming off of Anthem, which okay. feels very incomplete. Um, How many hours have you guys put into it? I I could probably tell you. I think I have about twenty five at this yeah, point. Yeah, probably over twenty. Okay. And that's uh, it's been out since and 
the tenth. I think we're tenth for John. Something like this. And story wise, I think sixty percent of the way through. Okay, twenty um, hours. That's not bad at all. That's pretty pretty good. Uh, we haven't touched the versus multiplayer. We only went in the dark zone like once. Okay, which was fun. It's still it still an causes intense, anxiety. Unique experience. Yeah, I I got downed. We because we weren't running into anyone for a while, but we were all like paranoid. We were going to run into people because we got tagged rogue for like hacking these computers or whatever. Uh, yeah. And every time we would hack a new one, like you're trying to like run around and hack these computers to get it up to a hundred percent, and then it unlocks this like like underground bunker kind of thing that you can get shit from. Um, but every time you hack a computer, it like the first time you go rogue, which means you're easier to spot and people can attack you on site. Um, I have 21 hours of playtime. Okay. <laughs> and uh, every time you get another terminal hacked, it just raises your timer. So you, Un- until your your rogue status there's like goes a, away. Yeah. Okay. It, so ours was absurdly high. We're like, shit, we're totally going to get screwed somewhere. And it didn't happen. And then like finally, like later on, we ran into some people. Um, there was like one dude that decided to start attacking us and I got down like immediately and John like scared him off and I got my gear back and we extracted. It was fun. So in terms of PVE, you've got like your mission style stuff. Are there strikes mm-hmm. as well? Like, yeah. How, how is, how is all of that structured? So, Strongholds. So the way the game works is you are playing through a main mission line, which uh, has you collecting uh, specialists to come back to your home base at the White House. As you complete those, it unlocks like side missions for each area that you go to, which are just to help you level along as needed. Uh, those side missions level with you, so they're always going to be just as difficult or one level ahead of you, which is kind of nice. Um, so there, it's you can't just breeze through them. Mm-hmm. Uh, the enemy AI is fucking insane. Like they are so much smarter than they used to be. They flank you. They have yeah. tools that seek you out, like RC cars with explosives, and like yeah. this other set of enemies has a has like a battle bot with saws yeah. on it that chases it de- you down. It depends on which faction of enemy you run into, and they will fight each other too. Like have little turf wars. Excuse but me. yeah, they're like. But the flanking is like absurd because like you'll be like you'll be playing and you'll be locked down. You're like, oh, yeah, like I'm so like locked in on taking care of these guys that are right in front of me. And you won't notice that there's three or four guys that have flooded around the other way around and come up behind you. And they all have shotguns. And then all of a sudden you're down and you're like or batons or there's a huge dude. Yeah, there's right. There's pretty much always a huge huge dude. And he has an axe. And then there's like a sledgehammer version, I think. Yeah. And they'll just run up to you and hit you so hard that you just like fall to the ground half dead and you're stunned for a minute. Um, dealing with situations like that, playing solo is incredibly challenging. Yeah. Um, it's fun though, but uh, there's like, there's no real, um, the dark zone has death penalties, but there's no real death penalty in the open world or in missions. Um, other than setting you back a ways. Yeah. And like if you're in the middle of doing like an open world event thing, it'll like if it's a if you're hunting like a bounty, for example, if you die during that solo, you fail it. Yeah. You only get one chance. Okay. If you die at any point during any other thing that you're doing, you can call for backup and the matchmaking is pretty quick. Yeah. Uh, which is really cool. As you you are playing, you will constantly be getting like so and so is calling for backup, like showing up on your screen and Isaac, the computer, announces it to you. Mm-hmm. Um, you don't have to respond to you those. You can shut I don't that think off too, I think, if you really Yeah, don't I, like I don't it. think there's any benefit to doing that other than you're helping another player do things. Well, that's the benefit um, being a nice guy. Yeah, and, and the game has level scaling. So, like, if you happen to help someone out who's a higher level than you, it brings you one level below them while you're playing. And then as you drop out, it drops you back to normal, things like that. Interesting. So, That's cool. Uh, the level skilling was a little bit broken at first, but I think they've since patched that out. Um, it was it was it was allowing level scaling still where you were dealing more damage, but the enemies were dealing damage to you as if you were still your original level. Uh-huh. So <laughs> you, like you could join a, if you're level 10 and you join someone who's 20, like you're literally being one shot at level enemies. 10. Damage. Yeah. yeah. I think we encountered that once or twice before they fixed it. So what are you guys noticing that they are doing different from the Division 1 that you are liking about the Division 2? The the bullet sponginess is more contextual now in the sense that like enemies all have armor to an extent, and you also have yeah. armor. And so they, they all have weak points for the right. most part. So like as you chip away at their armor, um, 
you can start dealing heavier damage to them, which makes it seem more realistic in that sense. But I never really cared. Like, it never bothered me, uh, the lack of realism in that in the first game. But it just feels better shooting it now because you're just like, oh, I've got to break through their armor and then I can kill them quick, quickly. Yeah, you're not just headshotting yeah. somebody and being like, um, why aren't they dying yet? Pick, yeah. Picking, uh, like, what weapons and mods and armor mods and what type of armor and all that stuff like makes a big difference but like i feel like there's a little more em- emphasis on actual like skill this time around instead of just the numbers and, and i feel like so with the original division it was like solely like if you had better shit you did better yeah and well and one of the fundamental things i heard and correct me if i'm wrong but in the first division you were able to be a specialist in something i think which, you can in the end game of the i'm getting this. there okay you were able to be a specialist, which I assume is kind of like your uh, whether or not you're being a warlock or a hunter or a kind something of. from Destiny, right? That was something that was added later on. When we first played the first division, that specialism thing, specialist aspect of it, had not yet been introduced. Yeah, okay. And the enemy variety used to be pretty weak in the first one, too, and they, I guess later on it got better with expansions, but I never saw that. So from it's what I understand, the end game of this one, you will end up being specialist specializing in something that's what i've heard you you can you can choose one of three specializations and you can flip flop between them as needed i read somewhere that it takes around uh 53 level ups in order for you to max out each individual specialization okay um and that like you know if you say you're you choose the sniper specialization you have the ability of doing like 25 percent more damage for headshots than someone who isn't specialized in sniping if you are the, I think it's the the bomber specialization. I don't know them yet because we haven't reached the end yeah, game. Yeah. Uh, but the bomber specialization has like a mortar shell that they can launch. Like it's it like you can direct it where to launch, oh, and yeah. it shoots like four or five like mortars. Nice. Um, which is super helpful in those instances where you literally are surrounded by enemies and they're like just destroying you. Um, that they their explosives do more damage, things like that. So the specializations play a bigger role at the end game, which is where the strongholds come in. Because as you unlock the strongholds, each each stronghold you do, which is like a strike or almost almost like a raid, but not quite, because they're like bigger in, with more enemies. Um, each stronghold you do unlocks your next world tier, and world tier is like your gear score. I, okay. This is all becoming super like convoluted and crazy sounding. No, no, uh, yeah, but it's, it I I'm making the connections to the, what I know the, from the game. Definitely, like that. your gear score is like your light level yeah. essentially. Yeah. As you as you, uh, it's the it, are you are you gated from doing activities due to your gear your gear score? Like I don't it, think so. Okay. There's just recommended levels. They will be significantly harder for you if you are not the right gear score. I don't okay. think. Um, but also, what the gear score does is it takes into account everything in your inventory. So say you like using a specific set of stuff, you can still use that, and if your gear score average of everything in your inventory is counted for, you will gain stuff at that gear score level as opposed to what you're wearing. So if you're wearing weaker stuff at the time, you will still get higher level stuff as you progress. And you're still able to do, are you still effective with like a lower gear score gun if if you're doing something, an activity that's at that higher gear score? Like, do you... I that I don't know. You because, can, uh, can again, you still use whatever you want. I we guess, haven't the reached question. the end game, and a okay. lot of this pertains to the end game. What we're talking about right now, um, in in the main game, um, it's just level based. So everything you know, like right now, we're level twenty one, twenty two ish right now. Uh, so everything we're fighting, all the items we're picking up are considered a level, well, and yeah. all the enemies we're fighting are at that same level. The, the gear and actually the skill system is very similar to how Diablo three works. Honestly, okay. um, like you when you find weapons of. It might like if you have a level 18 green, like a a common ish kind of item, and then you find another level 18 that's pretty much just like that, but it is like a blue, which is the next level up, or purple, which is the next level up above that, it's significantly stronger, even though it's the same level. Yeah. Okay. Um, The the blues and purples also have extra perks called talents attached to them. Yeah, and there are also, like, prerequisites sometimes to use those talents. Like, you have to have certain... um, There's three types. It's it's pretty complicated, but it's... This is where I think you would be interested in dealing with this. As as someone who likes numbers, which you do, It definitely (laughs) caters more to RPG nerds than, like... By numeral. Than, like, action, (laughs) action games... So, action game players. <laughs> so there's three different attributes that you pay attention to in terms of your gear as you're putting it on. You, you have skill, 
your skill level, your health, and your armor. And they're represented by three different colored icons. Skill is yellow, health is blue, armor is red. And each of the items you put on your body, like your chest piece or your holster or your backpack, they all have typically some uh, one of those things or two of them. Uh, it, they, it may be two armor pieces. It may be two health pieces. It could be a health piece and a skill piece. Um, but it's going to have these things that as you put them on, your, as you put the gear on, you will see an adjustment on the right or the left hand side of the screen that shows how many pieces of gear you're wearing that have those specific attributes on them. Okay. And you use that to unlock perks on your weapon. So hmm. you like for me, I have a an auto rifle that I'm using right now that if I have five or less of the uh, the armor attribute uh, on my armor pieces, it unlocks a an ability that every body shot I land with this gun gives me two percent more damage, and it stacks. So every shot that I hit is doing increasingly more damage, yeah, and it just mows through enemies. <laughs> so as you're like paying attention to these things, and I didn't understand any of this stuff at first. I had to watch a couple of YouTube videos to really get it. As I started paying attention to it, I started doing way more damage and like yeah, realizing yeah. that like the gear that I'm using is super important to how I want to play the Actually game. Actually playing the, to yeah. the strengths of what you're wearing the, rather than... The armor usually has secondary stats too and they will be in sets of like three. So if you have like the knee pads, the chest piece, and the gloves for a set, Are you get three pieces? attributes. There are no cod pieces, yeah, no. No. No, that, that's in Call of Duty. Actually. But yeah, like oh, okay. the the idea of gear sets starts as low as the green uncom or the green common yeah. items. So like instead of being like higher tiered armor where you you get the whole armor set and all of a sudden you're specked out, like you can start paying attention to that earlier on in the game, which makes it really interesting. I feel like the gear is more interesting overall. Like oh, this for time sure. around, for sure. Um, and it stays interesting. It's like, like John said, like there's cool things you can do with it immediately instead of just being like, oh, I'm just gonna get trash until I'm level twenty. Like in I Destiny, I like that. Like the gear, even if you're using the same type of gun throughout the entire game, I like that the gear can somehow force you to play differently than you normally. Yeah, yes. I mean, I switch things up all the time, especially skill wise. Like you can only you can have. You end up unlocking all the skills throughout the game. Okay, that's but good. you can only have two equipped at a time. All right, um, and then you can mod those out with different mods that yeah. you attach to the skill, um, and uh, it's really cool because like when you're playing alone, it's not as interesting. But when I play with John, like we try to like have skills that kind of synergize. Like I usually like try to use like healing stuff and he's using like Brian very much plays a sniper so he's tucked back doing headshots and he has healing abilities for his skills and I'm more up front so I've got the seeker grenade and I typically use the uh the auto turret and so I'll throw the auto turret out to set up and while that's setting up Brian usually will launch his first headshot to take out an enemy and engage us and as that's happening I'll lob my seeker grenade in it'll go after as many people as it can uh because I typically I use the one that's the cluster bomb so it splits yeah. into several I did just unlock the airburst one, which I'm really excited to use. Um, we mix things up, though. But it's There's the like planning the engagement is part of yeah. the it, fun. It would be more fun with like a full oh, squad. Fuck, yeah, it would if be we had impressive, because I'm pretty sure the game would scale you to the yeah. full squad, so it would give you Every, more. Enemies. Everything in the game does scale. Like at all, um, that's another cool thing I think is like none of the missions ever become like under leveled for you. Okay. They so all it's level up to useful your level. for you to go yes. back and do so, stuff. So doing everything in the game is a good idea, because that always pissed me off about D two. Is like they have all those cool Optional adventures. Missions. Yeah. The adventures have cool little stories to them, but like gear wise, there is no incentive to do those after you've beat the game. Yeah, because like you're just gonna get story. stuff from like yeah. w way too far. Because they're almost all like real low level, and there's no reason to use them to grind because you can go do like three public events and be the right level for the next story mission yeah but yeah they figured it out it works better in this game for sure all right we're like 90 minutes in so i'm sure nobody's listening anymore so we have to get to the question that everybody cares about okay what in this game makes it better than anthem why is this landing so much better than than anthem did than destiny 2 did at launch because like, it's feature complete. It, it, it feels finished. Well, what, it feels what, what, solid. It's polished, it's, too. So that also helps. I mean, those games are 
Okay, so I so you're not nothing. One of the things is nothing is buggy. You're not so struggling yeah. against the technical aspects of the game. Right? Yeah, it runs really well on PC too, and like whatever I bitched about with the controls and the beta it doesn't bother me anymore. It all, all right. it all works well. So you feel like there's more to do than something like any of those games. Oh, at absolutely. Launch? Is yeah. that? I don't think it necessarily is. Is that there's more to do? It's that you have. You have a perpetual world that feels more lived in. You have like the the way the game scales, the everything scales as you play, which is incredible and to we, me. Like they keep adding they've actually added new events like like as you're playing like those new random world activities. Yeah. They weren't showing up at all until the other day when I was playing and now all of a sudden there's like a new type of activity. Um but it's just like seamless. It's just part of the the open environment okay it this game just feels it, it, it i can't it's hard to describe i i can't really it's some and i was someone who was like hardcore into destiny for a while you know yeah um and this we is, know that you like these kinds of games i, I do but like it, it but this is also a very different game yeah from destiny I, for me there's there's a place for both of them for sh- there's depending on like a place what for both i'm games. feeling you know because it's like this is definitely a slower paced well, game. It's a third it's person tactical. shooter as opposed to yeah. a first person shooter. Like, the, like the there multi- are differences. The multiplayer, between. like PVP, isn't going to be like fast deathmatch style stuff like Destiny is, and I like that kind of stuff. Okay. Um, you don't. They do have PVP in this though, which they did not have in the original. Other outside of the Dark Zone stuff. You yeah. don't. You don't feel like a badass because you're jumping, f- like you're you're jumping, flying through the air and headshotting like fifteen enemies at once, and then lobbing a super and shit no. like that. You don't feel badass because of that. You feel badass because you roll up on a squad of like fifteen enemies, chilling there, doing whatever activity they're doing, and you you figure out your plan of attack and mm-hmm. like the strategic aspect of like how am I going to tackle this in a manner in which I don't die, like. It just feels that that to me is more rewarding of a game than Destiny's like level of like I'm gonna fly through the air and headshot things. The, ex- like, the it, exploration's more rewarding too. There's like interesting things to find and see everywhere. Like I'll have I'll probably be scouring the map for months trying to find everything. So like I guess the thing that you've brought me to is like when I'm in a mission, is there like a, okay, we all need to stand in this area while something's decoding. Like, does that happen a lot? No, How do these there's, missions... well, so there's, there's a world event specifically that you can, you can take part in that, uh, there's like a, a broadcast speaker that's going off and you have to run up to like, you take out the enemies around it first. And then in order to engage the next segment of that event, you have to actually restart the speaker system to be playing a positive broadcast. I mean, and that sort of thing is the closest thing to what you're describing. Okay. There's definitely a lot of killing waves of dudes. Yeah. That doesn't go away. But, okay. but you don't have to like stand there and wait. And like, you don't have to have other people stand there and wait. Like you can, you can hit the button and then go take cover and then enemies flood in. And then you strategically figure out how you're going to get rid of them. And then halfway through it, it stops again and you have to run up and hit the button again to, to wave in the second wave of people. Okay. You could also probably like in the original one, it, it, I would imagine it'll work with this too. You can probably spec out a character to that would rely largely on doing damage and shit with skills and not even use weapons as much. Like that would be more your secondary, but that stuff like you can't really do at the level that we're at. Yeah. That's more like an end game thing. <sighs> There's a lot of variety in ways to like the weapons all have a, like, I don't feel like we're own... answering his question. No. Feel. And I, I don't have a great way to ask it for you because it's a very like nebulous thing, but like, it just seems like um it it seems that this is actually f- filling a need that people had unlike things like destiny when they first came out like i don't understand like Bri- brian said that it sound it seemed like the division 2 that U- ubisoft has learned from the mistakes of these other games for once yeah. and and that's good but i'm trying to like quantify what that means and, and, and it, has, it has an extremely rewarding 30 second loop so Every, like so so you feel like you getting gear and like uh it and, is, and getting yes. materials or whatever like experience point however you're doing that you are you are accruing more experiences yeah. in in a higher clip than something like anthem which we just played right sure yeah okay so 
on top of that, you feel like the gear is meaningful. Like you yeah. have different brands of the same type of gun that are doing things differently. Mm-hmm. Yes. I, I have specific like sniper rifles. I already like prefer over other brands because okay. they feel just enough better than the other ones, even though damage wise they're similar and stuff like that. And the guns in general feel great. Okay. And sound great. So, and then on top of that, like when you're playing through these missions, it sounds like it's still killing waves of enemies and killing killing mobs of things. And you've got the big boss that's coming out with a bunch of smaller mobs. Somebody's got to deal with the mobs while you're attacking yes. the boss. Things like that. But are are you feeling a more coherent story through this mission than you did in something like anthem or destiny 2 like does it do, are you are you caring about that aspect i'm not at all, caring is what about I'm, the story all right i'm i'm cool with like i feel like you're shooting in, shit and getting loot having fun with a friend but i feel like we're the sense of accomplishment is there though like okay. i don't care about the overall arcing story but the idea is like you're in dc you're trying to like Help these like build little the settlements. There's, there's settlements. Build settlements. Build the community yeah. back up. Everything you do has like a normal like purpose to it, you know. Okay. And it's fulfilling because like you'll do these random things out in the world that you're gonna do anyways, and then by doing that, you're like getting loot and you turn it in to f- to like um, support these projects that they're doing in one of the settlements, and then by finishing that project you they give you like a piece of gear and like something else cool you can do in that settlement and and visually like something cool like i mean there's always just again like the idea of the world feeling more lived in like this game like it just doesn't that that is like a big part of this game specifically like uh, yeah i would say honestly the biggest difference really is it doesn't feel like a pointless grind like the other games can i just wonder how much of like this working for people has to do with the fact that like you're living in the real world too like it's certainly probably much more impactful to be walking around dilapidated washington dc than it is to be walking around bastion and anthem or like well there's, I mean, there's got to be more meaning to it than than like the fact that you are helping people and you know what these people need like yeah. it's not this weird abstracted i need to learn it's what the th- dominion are and like there's a little that bit of that is I guess, interesting but. i mean of the worlds of these like three games though like i like the destiny world though because i like sci-fi fantasy stuff more yeah. that's more intriguing to me but i mean yeah like i feel like i have more of a real purpose in this game Okay. Like it's put into context better. Yeah. You don't just feel like you're doing things just as busy work to get a weapon that's going to take you two months to get. Like, in I, I mean, I'm sure that's more what the end game is going to be like, but I think the idea of working towards the speci- specializations is what's going to push you along. I've heard that. it's still fun, though. Yeah, a lot. Of, well, I I was reading a bunch of like butt hurt tryhards that are like upset that the world tier five hasn't been released yet, and they're like crying about it on the internet. Well, that's so, fine. Go play a different game. So there are still those people that ran to the end of the treadmill within the first like yeah, couple and, days and that's kind of th- that's just fucking. I think obscene, I think I've heard opinion. it takes it about sixty hours just to even get to that point. All right, I I it's just interesting because like Anthem just happened and it seems like it's in this like weird holding pattern and that's if you like still care about it which there are certainly people that do but like it just feels like people are so much more satisfied with this than than people have been with other games of this type it, i mean the quality of life things that this game does that obviously anthem has none of that <laughs> well and, and destiny it- does now but it didn't back when it came out um, that makes a huge difference. Like, I don't feel like I'm ever like I. we rarely waste any time like sift like uh, destiny. I'd be like, oh, I got to go back to the vault. Oh, I got to clear this fucking shit out of my inventory. Let oh, my, my mailbox my is full. And... Like the inventory in this, like you can upgrade it and even like and it's super easy to upgrade. And it's like I never have it full. That's and, good. And you can you can just straight up dismantle things when you're out in the world. If you don't want them, you can dismantle them when you loot them. There's options. Like you like can, instead of just picking you can it equip up, you can right away pick up to dismantle, you like, can pick up dismantle. You can pick up and categorize, 
categorize it as uh, junk. So you can just sell all your junk with one press of the button awesome. when you go to the vendor. Well, it just makes everything so much less shitty feeling. Like it's uh, it sounds like Ubisoft actually learned from their first foray. Don't give them all this. the credit. Massive did a lot of that too. We have to remember, Massive developed this game. Like this is their game. Mm. Okay. They they but, did a lot of that work, and they and that's the thing is like when when the Division One came out and it bombed hard at, at first. They literally took all the content creators that were like making waves with the with the Division One, and they brought them over to Europe and made them sit down and play early builds of the game and like figure out where the content creators, who who knew all the ins and outs and flaws of this game, who, they sat them down and they were like, "Where can we fix this? What, what and, can we make the experience better?" With? Right, and th- and that's important, you know. And and uh, I think their their level of their ability to do that as well as just their general involvement in the community is awesome. Um, and, and it, like, I don't, I don't know. I just, I definitely want to put it out there that this game isn't for everyone. Yeah. Like, they're like, if you are looking for a competitive online shooter game of some sort, play rainbow six, don't play this or play rainbow six and use this to cool down after playing rainbow six. <laughs> when you get super sweaty, play this by yourself once in a while. Yeah. Like this, if it's, you want a decent challenge and it's fun to just, you just want to around. roam around. Yeah. Like the 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 world is huge in this. It seems like and it's they're, really they're, big. I'm I'm still running into buildings where I didn't realize I could climb over a wall and get into yeah. a building that I Plus, didn't. Like, yeah, there's a bunch of underground areas too. Like and supposedly like the underground sewers form. are supposedly like the best place to get loot and shit, and that's mm-hmm. where all like the harder enemies are hanging out and 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 just weird stuff. This this game is awesome. It is it is so well done and put together, and it's hard. Like I I have a very difficult time figuring out bad things to say about it. Yeah, I, we haven't really given the multiplayer like the conflict mode a super you know a solid chance. I'd really like to save that towards end game when I have better gear and shit. Yeah, um, the dark zone is still this anxiety ridden event where like even though like we felt like we were playing in an instance of the dark zone where there was nobody like it felt there like were there, people there we just didn't know it. That's awesome. So we're still ducking and covering behind shit and like running like we were taking our yeah. sweet time getting from A to B just because of that specific like you never know. And yeah. like when those those people aren't labeled like enemies are necessarily like you can see their name. It's up to up, them. But you can not see their wanna. name when they're close enough. And it tells you when they because you turn on rogue mode on your own. Like it's not from shooting someone like you have to flick a switch literally to do it. I so I think you can just shoot someone as well. We, I don't know. That's I think it's a different rogue mode, though, is yeah. the thing. Like there's levels of rogue that so you, you can, can go. denote yourself as like I'm, I'm yeah. here to yes. stir shit up, yep. and then there's also so people. that that guy who messed with us, like I watched him flip to rogue, and I said this guy's gonna go rogue, and he did, and we saw it happen, and it popped up on the screen, and then he and just then started one shotted me, one shotted <laughs> Brian with a shotgun from point blank, and then I threw out as that happened, I ducked behind a wall and I threw out my turret to keep to suppress him. As he was suppressed, I ran up on him with my shotgun and got all his armor down and got him to a point where he had to run away. And then he tried to come back. And then I threw a secret grenade at him. And, like, it's just, like, it has a competitiveness to it in a way, but it's not the same. It's a different uh, endorphin rush than, yeah. than Rainbow Six. So if you're looking to, like, get a different high out of it, it's there. But, it, yeah. yeah John looks high right now just talking <laughs> about I'm so, that. I can't stop thinking about the game is the thing. I, I just want to go play it some more. So Yeah, let's, let's wrap this up so we can go play. All right. Yeah. Sounds oh. good. I'm glad you guys like it. I'm glad uh, it's it's actually as Gladys said. I'm glad they released a finished shooter, not like Destiny and Anthem. Uh, it it sounds like they did a good job, and and it'll be interesting to see how the uh, Ubisoft we want to support this for several years to come. If that will happen with this rather than Division One, or if I they're going to continue to do like the Division Three will be out in two years, or what I just they'll think do with it. Uh, Ubisoft is killing it right now. Yeah. They, they are like they are the game company to work for right now. Like they're fucking killing it in every way, shape, and form. I mean, they're killing it with esports with Rainbow Six. They've got great adventure games like Assassin's Creed. Now they've got the Division, which is somehow like a blend between like Rainbow Six and Assassin's Creed. Yeah. And like, I mean, like they're able to do all these things and they do them very, very well. And uh, yeah, I just like I they're they're killing it. It's just good. Fucking killing it. It's good. So cool. Uh, so. It, it has been a month since we've become Twitch affiliates. If you did give us your free Prime subscription, we are very appreciative. If you'd like to give it to us again this year, please stop by, or this month, please stop by twitch.com slash Midwest Game Nerds. Our emoticons got approved. Yes, you, you do now get uh, 
I, I believe you get you get me. I'm yeah. the f- I'm like the free emoticon if you sign up with Prime. Yeah, John John is the the free one. You get Alex's tears for the middle tier, and you get uh, Brian in VR headset for the, yeah. the third tier. So please, I'm top tier. That's right. Subscribe <laughs> that means to no us. No one will have me. Watch watch our series. Sakiro Alex dies continually and uh, or repeatedly. However, we'd like to do it and uh, continue to support us. So we keep doing what we're doing. Speaking of supporting us, if you want to follow us on social media or see other places you can listen to or watch the show, check out MidwestGameNerds.com slash links. Also, the Midwest Podcast Network now has a Patreon. The Patreon is meant to benefit all the shows on the network. You can subscribe for as little as $1 a month and help keep our shows alive and well. If you don't feel like spending money uh, for real money, you can always use your Amazon Prime, which Alex said for our Twitch account. Uh, Check out our Patreon at mpn.bz slash Patreon. Thanks again to Jason K and Gojo for their contributions. And everyone else who's contributed contributed to the Patreon, we appreciate that. As always, we do appreciate your feedback, which you can send to MidwestGameNerds at gmail.com. And don't forget to follow us on Twitch as well as rate and review us on your favorite podcatcher. Uh, that being said, I'm not sure what we're going to talk about next time. Maybe Probably some more second row. Yeah. Okay. I may pick it up. I don't know. I'm super sucked into the division right now. <laughs> That's fine. So I mean, yeah. We'll I hope it out. to reach endgame by that point and can hopefully talk a little more about that. So. All right. That sounds yeah. good. Thanks, everybody, for joining. And we will see you next time. Peace.